Nuclear fusion powers the sun and stars. It's both the most common form of energy in the universe and the most powerful. Producing abundant fusion on Earth is considered one of the grand engineering challenges of the 21st century. If achieved, clean, safe energy could be available for thousands or even millions of years. That's why efforts are underway here in the United States and across the world to help make this concept of a star on Earth a reality. The ambitious undertaking is part of the International Eater Project, a seven-member partnership with a goal of demonstrating the feasibility of fusion energy while expanding each nation's capabilities. This unique experimental facility is now under construction in France. While fusion power has been demonstrated in machines around the world, the ITER device, known as a tokamak, will be the first to produce sustained net power. ITER is an important next step in creating fusion energy. ITER's real role is to show a sustained burning plasma for hundreds of seconds and to show that we have the energy multiplier, if you want to think of it that way, where the energy we put in will be multiplied by a factor of 10 in terms of the fusion power we get out. General Atomics, an industry partner with U.S. ITER, is charged with building the modules of the central magnet of the tokamak, the superconducting central solenoid, which is the heart of ITER. The ITER central solenoid is really down in the very core, the center of the ITER device of the tokamak, and the plasma then is this donut-shaped gas and ions that move around. Now, one of the big things to make a plasma stable in a tokamak is you drive current in the plasma. To put it into perspective, those large-scale plasmas that will circulate in the tokamak will be hotter than the sun. Miles of superconducting magnets will shape and combine the plasma within a 10-story tall vacuum vessel, which is essentially a gigantic magnetic bottle. Fabricating these massive central solenoid modules presents formidable challenges for GA, which brings decades of fusion science and engineering expertise to the task. First, there are the magnet modules, six in total with an extra made as a spare. Ten process stations have been assembled and commissioned to manufacture them. Each individual piece of conductor is 900 meters long and wound into turns, the ends of which must come within a quarter of an inch of each other. A total of four miles of conductor go into a single module. Once wound, the coals are heat treated for a month during which the niobium tin alloy of the conductor becomes superconducting. Then they're insulated. Each of the six modules weighs some 250,000 pounds and will be tested at 50 kilo amperes, slightly higher than the actual ITER operating current, and at four degrees Kelvin. The modules are then supported by a structural cage built to withstand tremendous force, the equivalent, in fact, of two space shuttles worth of thrust. Industries across the country are now building components for the support cage. One of the last components that gets assembled in the eater, this whole central solenoid, 50 plus feet tall, gets lowered down into the center of it and then connected into the, the systems that will provide power to the coil. It's a very tightly controlled process and the tolerances are incredible. And that's the real challenge is to make sure that when you do something for the first time, it works. The first modules will be completed next year. With the fabrication of the central solenoid, the project moves closer to the excitement of tokamak assembly, operations, and the realization of a burning plasma. ITER's been a great learning opportunity and a technology development program. The components that are being made, the technologies that are being used, have never been done on this scale before. When achieved, this experimental fusion device can pave the way forward for the fusion plants of tomorrow. In the meantime, the heart of ITER, the U.S.-made central solenoid, is at the center of Fusion's future.